Tell us your name and tell us about your class. Hi, it is so nice to be here. My name is Dr. Rosalind Franklin. Um, and my project was through King's College in London. Um, I got a fellowship known as the Turner and Newell Fellowship. And so I worked in John Randall's lab, who was a biophysicist at King's College at the time. The project that I was a part of used X-ray diffraction to study molecules in a way that allows us to better understand their 3D structure. Um, and so with this, not only do we understand their structure, but also their function. Um, and so it allows us as scientists to be able to differentiate molecules from one another. Um, and in particular, we studied DNA. And through this, I actually discovered the double helical structure that composes DNA. And you can see this in my photo 51. What were you guys trying to do or find? Yeah, we were attempting to understand the 3D makeup of molecules. So again, in our case, DNA. Um, and I was actually known for my skills in x-ray crystallography. Um, and so I was brought on at King's College by Dr. Randall to look more closely at molecules using this. Um, and there were so many other things about molecules that we didn't have the answers to yet, so we couldn't fully understand how they functioned. We were looking for answers to how molecules could store information, how they shared information with one another, and what the inside of them looked like in, or in order to store this information. Um, just to give a few examples. So by answering these questions, it would allow us to better understand and appreciate the molecules we're surrounded by. Um, and so we use, like I said, X-ray crystallography. Um, and for DNA, we actually used a different technique of X-ray diffraction due to DNA not naturally being in the form of a crystal. Um, and so a PhD student of mine, Raymond Gosling, um, and I conducted these experiments using a small DNA fiber. Um, and just to give a little bit more detail on how this works, X-ray diffraction uses a scattering of X-rays that are diffracted by the atoms of a molecule structure in order to gather the information. So uh, where did the project or experiment occur? Yeah, like I mentioned briefly before, the experiment took place at King's College in London. What other significant events were happening around the world at that time? So while we were very active in this experiment, um, there were so many other things that shaped um, the 1950s, one being NATO, which was um, founded in 1949, and this stands for the North Atlantic um, Treaty Organization, which basically, it was America and Europe that came together to protect them from the Soviet Union. Um, also, North Korea invaded South Korea, and the Korean War went underway. Um, and unfortunately, there was no really conclusivity on who won that war in 1953, um, but that is what put up the border between North and South Korea. Um, in addition to that, in 1952, much to my own dismay, King George VI passed and Queen Elizabeth II took the throne. Um, and on top of that, between the thick smog that took over London in 1952 and then the spread of the polio virus in the U.S., there were thousands of people that lost their lives. Um, and there are just so many other things that I could mention, but I will just touch slightly on the Montgomery bus boycott. And this occurred in 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama in the United States. Um, and this was actually the first demonstration against segregation in the U.S. And it really took off when Rosa Parks was actually arrested for giving up her or refusing to give up her seat to a white man. Mm -hmm. Who else was involved in the project? Along with myself, I've mentioned him briefly, was Raymond Gosling, who was actually a graduate student of mine getting his PhD. Um, and he actually was the one who pioneered the use of X-ray diffraction at King's College and worked with samples of DNA along with Maurice Wilkins. Um, and so the experiment took place in John Randall's lab, but he was not really a part of the experiment. But like I mentioned, Dr. Wilkins, um, he was the assistant lab chief at the time, and he was kind of involved in the experiment. He's the one who kind of had the idea of using DNA. Um, but then there was also Jane Watson and Francis Crick who were involved in the findings, but not in my experiment that I was conducting. Um, but it was from my work, and again, photo 51, that Watson and Crick were actually able to make their own discoveries, and this was due to um, Dr. Wilkins going behind my back and sharing my data. So what was your role in the project? My particular role in this project was using the technique known as X-ray crystallography to study 3D model of molecules and to answer some of the questions like I stated before. So for the DNA molecule, I used a different x-ray technique since it's not, DNA is not in the form of a crystal. Um, so in doing this experiment, I actually discovered the helical structure 
that DNA is composed of, and you can see it here in the crosses of the photo 51. Um, and in doing so, yeah, I discovered also that DNA is not just in one form, but two, and I named it very simply A and B. Um, and in turn, I also worked to create a mathematical, mathematical model of diffraction from my findings, but unfortunately I passed before I was done doing that. Um, and then I was able to capture, again, my infamous photo, photo 51, which demonstrates the double helical structure. And this is actually the photo that was also shared with Watson and Crick to help them make their discoveries. What impact did your project have on the physics community? My discoveries, um, as we talked about briefly, ultimately led to Watson and Crick's discovery of the DNA structure. That being said, beyond its helical structure, it's also composed of nitrogenous bases and hydrogen bonds that um, allow those bases to bond together. Um, and then additionally, this led to the understanding of how DNA, DNA stores information that codes for an individual's entire genome. Actually, in 2003, um, the entire genome was sequenced. And so this provided more knowledge for future researchers to utilize things like x ray diffraction and um, the patterns that elicit those elicit in order to make a better understanding of molecules and other materials. Um, and most already know this, but X-rays are light waves and they are physical components and often used in physics. Um, so the space between atoms acts as a diffraction grating and from my discoveries, we recognize that this method does work um, to look at molecules more closely and can also be used in um, other situations to do experiments. What else did you spend your time experimenting with and studying? So before coming on to work at the lab in King's College, I spent a lot of my time supporting the war efforts and studying the chemical composition of coal. And the goal in this was to understand the permeability of coal by things like water, solvents, um, as well as how the carbon content and heating the coal affects the permeability. Um, so I was actually, funnily enough, the first to identify the microstructures of coal. Um, and these findings actually allowed me to write my thesis in order to receive my PhD from Cambridge. Um, after King's College, well, after that, actually, I went on to work at a lab in France, and I now I analyzed carbon using X-ray crystallography, which is actually where I was able to re refine my skills. Um, and then after my work at King's College, I worked at Birkbeck College, and that's where I shifted my attention more to studying the structure of plant viruses. Um, I was really interested in tobacco, and I was able to use my skills and the knowledge of X-ray diffraction to study tobacco. And with this, I was among others that discovered that RNA is in the wall of a protein shell that protects the molecule. Good job. Thank you so much for having me.